Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to look at how to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. Now this video actually replaces one that I prepared yesterday where there was a mistake in one of my calculations. So thanks very much to the viewer who picked up that mistake. If you do find mistakes in any of my videos, please feel free to post a comment and hopefully I will see that and fix it. So what we're going to look at today is calculating the pH of a buffer solution. And a buffer solution, remember, is a mixture of an acid and its conjugate base. So usually in your question, you'll be given some information. You might have the pH or the, uh, the pKa or the Ka of the acid or the Kb or pKb of the base. You will have some concentrations, either the concentration of the acid and its conjugate base or perhaps the ratio thereof, or Perhaps it's turned around and you've been given the pH and asked to work out the ratio of acid to base. There's lots of different ways the questions can be worded. But in all cases, you need to come back to that expression for Ka. So remember that Ka is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the undissociated acid. So you can, all you need to do is take whatever values you've got, whatever you're trying to find, and just rearrange this equation to suit. It does take a little bit of time and practice to get used to it. The one thing you cannot do is use the same thing that we did when we were calculating the pH of a weak acid, where we assume that the concentration of hydronium and the conjugate base are equal, because they're not going to be, because you've added more conjugate base to it. This is not a pure substance pure solution of an acid, it is a mixture. So you have to think about this back from first principles again. Okay, so here's a problem. This is from one of the old NCEA exams, where 5.11 grams of sodium methanoate is added to 125 mils of methanoic acid to make a buffer solution. And we're given the Ka and the pKa of the methanoic acid. Now, in this case, we need concentrations. We've got a concentration of methanoic acid, but we do not have a concentration of sodium methanoate. We've only got a mass. So we need to work out a concentration first. So to do that, you're going to use your old friends in equations for moles and concentration, which you are provided with in the formula sheet for this exam. So moles equals mass over molar mass. You've got your mass. The molar mass is usually provided in the question. I just haven't included it in the SNP. And so you can work out the number of moles of sodium methanoate. You've got your volume because that's provided. So you can work out a concentration. Moles divide volume. Simply substitute your numbers in. Remember to convert your mils into litres. And there we have a concentration of moles per litre. Now we can come back to our equation. That's the other information we've been provided. So we've got Ka equals the concentration of methanoate times the concentration of hydronium divided by the concentration of methanoic acid. You can choose to either rearrange at this point or substitute and then rearrange after. In this case, I've rearranged first. Substitute my numbers in and solve. That gives me my hydronium ion concentration, however it does not give me my pH. Remember pH is negative log of hydronium ion, sorry that bit's been slightly cut off, and that is a pH of 4.50. Now, rounding pH and significant figures, technically, if you're rounding to three significant figures, and because pH is a log, any number that is a log, you're actually looking at the figures past the decimal point. So three sig figs for a log is actually three dp's. However, NCEA, in its infinite wisdom, has decided to ignore the standard convention, and so we'll just round to three digits as per any other number without actually considering what it is. So 4.5 is the pH that we will round to. Now there is a shortcut process that we can use. It is an extra formula that you have to memorize and know when and how to use. It's up to you whether you go this way or not. You can always use the Ka. 
expression and that general formula is provided on your formula sheet. But the buffer equation or the henderson hasselbach equation is simply another way of expressing the same thing. And it is that the pH of a buffer solution is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acid. All this equation is, is the Ka expression, if you take the negative log of everything in that expression and rearrange it, you get this. It's nothing new, it's just a different way of expressing the same thing. But sometimes it can make life easier for yourself. So here's another example. This was another NCEA question. This was from 2019. Where dilute hydrochloric acid is added to a solution of sodium ethanoate until the ratio of sodium ethanoate to ethanoic acid is 2 to 5. So in this case, you're not given any concentrations, but you are given a ratio of base to acid. So to calculate the pH of this buffer solution, it kind of makes sense, if you can remember it, to use that buffer equation. You don't have to, you can go from Ka as well. But if you can remember the buffer equation, then that's one way to work it. So, because you see that last term, log of base divided acid, well you already have the ratio of base divided acid, it's 2 to 5. So you can put that number in directly, you've got your pKa. So this becomes a very simple substitute and solve problem. pKa plus log of 2 over 5. Bung that into your calculator and you find that the pH is equal to 4.36. So this can be an easy way around things, but you don't have to use this. Okay, I'm going to stress that. If you can remember it and you're happy with it, go with it. But if you can't, you can always go back to the pH and the, sorry, to the pKa or the Ka expression, where Ka is equal to um, the hydronium ion times the concentration of base over acid. So you've still got that, and you can always refer back to that. I hope you found this helpful. I apologise for the mistake in the first time I made this, but please do keep letting me know if I have stuffed up. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.